Welcome to this session, How Load Balancing Enables Key Benefits in Private Cloud with VMware Cloud Foundation. My name is Frank Yu. I'm a Senior Product Manager with VMware for the NSX Advanced Load Balancer. And we are pleased to have with us special guest, Sabina Anya, Product Marketing Manager for VMware for VMware Cloud Foundation. So we're going to be talking about some really interesting things in terms of VMware Cloud Foundation, how it really enables private cloud and enables you to do some really cool things with your infrastructure and talk about how NSX Advanced Load Balancer, the load balancing capabilities can really enhance what you can do with your VMware Cloud Foundation. So let's get started and talk about this. So first, I want to talk about some background information on why we're doing what we're doing today and what we're talking about. And first, I want to talk about one key thing is we see a lot of things in terms of modern apps. And when I say modern apps, I mean containers, microservices, this concept of DevOps, and how modern apps are really driving these cloud infrastructure requirements. So, so you see on the left-hand side, developer and DevOps, and they want to create applications quickly and easily in these different format. So on the right-hand side, we have infrastructure and ops, kind of your, I'm going to say, legacy, traditional way you do networking and infrastructure and applications. And first thing I want to talk about is application requirements. So the whole DevOps, microservices, modern apps, and everything, they're driving application requirements. And these application requirements are driving these infrastructure decisions in terms of how we put things in the cloud, what services are needed, how they are being built. And we need to really understand and be able to build our infrastructure to support that. Second thing they're doing is they're really talking about rapid infrastructure provisioning, self-service catalogs. And what I mean is they are building things quickly and easily and very often. It's that lots of things are happening in real time and they're happening in a situation where changes are being done weekly, daily, versus your traditional, I'm going to say traditional six month push out a big release. They do things on a very small and in very small increments, but very often. And we need to be able to adapt to that as well. And third, they need the ability to refactor, replatform migrate apps. I mean, they want agility. They want to be able to change things quickly and easily. And they also want the ability to do change things in terms of deployment on demand at scale. When I say at scale, I mean they want elasticity. They want to be able to scale up and down the services quickly and easily. And that's really important for them. So the infrastructure side of things, we need to really adjust and adapt to these changes that they're driving in terms of how they're building and deploying applications. So we need more specialized computing. We need more storage for AI, ML, artificial intelligence, machine learning. We want real-time capabilities. We want analytics. We want to be able to build what we nowadays call infrastructure as code. We want to make the infrastructure as easy for them to integrate and deploy their self-catalog their automated tools and have APIs so that they can drive these things themselves. And the third piece, they we really need to provide this consistent infrastructure because when they're building apps and they want that agility, they want that elasticity, it's going to be across multiple clouds. They want to have that consistency. They don't care what cloud it is as long as the application is performing. And they want that infrastructure to be consistent. So this is becoming very important for them in terms of how they drive and build their applications. And we need to support that from an infrastructure and application support perspective. Load balancing is really needed for these today's for today's applications. We really need load balancing to support the applications and give us this flexibility, this agility, and elasticity. And let me tell you how we're doing this. So for example, with NSX Advanced Load Balancer, I'm going to use this example, of course, since we're at VMware, we have the software-defined application delivery fabric. We have this controller, which is in the control plane, and it configures, control. you do the configuration, management, operations, and everything within the controller, it provides the analytics. And then we have a separate data plane where all the load balancing pieces are deployed. And the controller manages this data plane in terms of where the control, where the service, what we call the service engines in the data plane exist and how they are driving to support the applications. And it makes that determination. You don't have to deal with individual legacy load balancing technology to be able to support that. And this is really provided on any infrastructure. 
So this hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, whether you're on-premises in the private cloud, we want to provide that consistency with your virtualized containers within these different environments. And next, we want to provide that elasticity. So the controller can, through the analytics, can determine when think more resources are needed and provide those resources on demand. And it can do it in an automatic fashion. We'll talk about that in a second. And we need that resilience. So if an application fails, if a site fails, disaster recovery, high availability, it can detect and understand and be able to reapply those application instances and resources to make sure they're always available. And that automation, which I mentioned previously, we want to provide this in an automatic fashion. When we talk about DevOps and these microservices and everything else, we're making these changes. There's tons of changes, tons of applications, hundreds, thousands of applications within any single enterprise infrastructure. And we need to do this automatically because we just don't have the manual resources to work properly. So we need proper automation through these APIs, through these tools to give the the developers and the application owners the ability to be able to do these themselves as well. And ultimately, this means that we need the analytics. We need analytics observability. We need to understand what is happening in the application environment operationally so that we can determine what we need to do, whether it's that elasticity for the on-demand resourcing, the availability for the resilience when they determine failures. And then you can see there, there's also on the left-hand side, this Pulse Cloud Service. That's intelligent services that are being provided on demand in real time, for example, for security. So when new threats appear, they're automatically being applied to this infrastructure. So load balancing is really needed in these cloud environments. It's providing that agility and elasticity, elasticity from a application perspective for the infrastructures that we're providing. And we're gonna show, and we're gonna talk about how that is really important, especially when we talk about solutions like VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation, and how we can apply these things to give enhanced functionality at the application layer for these solutions. And ultimately, again, VMware Cloud Foundation, VMware NSX Advanced Load Balancer, it really makes sense to bring them together. We're bringing them together internally at VMware by doing some integrations to make sure that they work well and they do some really cool things and make it easy to see and benefit the value and gain the benefit of the value of bringing these pieces together. So we have the infrastructure capabilities within VMware Cloud Foundation, where it's providing the ability to manage the virtual machines and the containers infrastructure and really provide that infrastructure for this private cloud technology. And then the application layer with the VMware NSX Advanced Load Balancer and bringing that together so we have the, what I'm going to say, the full OSI model from layer two to layer seven of giving you a full stack of managing your IT infrastructure. And to give you an example, what we're talking about here is we want to take VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation, and we're really think of it as kind of an infrastructure platform where it's really managing those VMs those containers and managing that infrastructure to help to make it easier for you. And we want to make it transform it to now become also an application aware platform. And that's what NSX Advanced Load Balancer can do. It can really enhance the VMware Cloud Foundation. So now you're, it is becoming application aware. We can understand the applications and within the VMware Cloud Foundation, as well as in other environments, if you're running a hybrid cloud or multi-cloud scenario, we give you the visibility for application performance. So you understand how the application is performing, number one. And two, through the automation that I mentioned, we can give you the ability to provide a closed loop feedback structure so that it can adjust the applications as necessary to make sure that the performance is going to be optimal for your users and your customers. And third is we're going to be mapping that application to the infrastructure. So we understand when we deploy applications, where are they depl being deployed within the containers, within the virtual machines to really give you that mapping and integration of the application infrastructure into the VCF infrastructure platform. So let's start at the beginning. We had an, 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 an interesting conversation about why load balancers are important, but I want to take a bit of a step back and go all the way to the infrastructure and how things are built nowadays. 
the private cloud is the key to many enterprises out there. It's the key to many modernization efforts. It's where all the magic happens, whether you're talking about multi-cloud or whether you have a public cloud strategy, whether any of these things have to happen in your infrastructure, you usually have key things that you need to do at the private cloud level. So why don't you make it the foundation of everything that's about to come? And we're obviously playing a little bit of a pun on, on the product here, but let's leave that aside for a second. What do modern organizations need? They need modern solutions. This is easy, but they, need, they have three fundamental requirements. Let's talk a little bit about that. We start with the need for efficient IT operations. Before everything, before everything comes, you need this ability to overcome opaque infrastructure where you have demands and you ask, can I get this network service delivered? Can I get this VLAN provision? Can I get the storage delivered to me? And it's often, yes, but I don't know how long it will take. Or you put a ticket in the system and you don't know why it's taking so long or why hasn't it done already? Or at which point will it break? And if you want to troubleshoot, where is the issue? Where is my problem? How much will it cost? How do you trigger all sorts of events from the, from the smallest maintenance activities? The problem is that if you have a fragmented infrastructure, it's very difficult to figure out where stuff happens, how it happens, where it's stuck, and so on and so forth. So customers have a need for efficient operation. And this is not a new talk track. You've heard us talk about this over the years. And it's, it's a known issue in the market. We're going to talk a little bit later about how we bring all of this together. Right now, let's talk a little bit about what hurts. The customer also sees, the standard customer sees the pressure around innovation, whether it's faster application deployment, modern application support. We had at some point the presentation where we discuss about one of those Friday afternoons where if you're a system administrator or an infrastructure engineer and you hear a boss saying, we have this critical project coming in and it's the last thing you want to hear on a Friday afternoon because half of your colleagues aren't available and you need all sorts of manpower to deploy this. You need approvals. You want, however, the infrastructure that can immediately deploy where you say, oh, is it a machine learning application? No problem. I'll provision you everything you need. I know exactly how long it will take and I can go home. Now, the last thing that every infrastructure needs is a flexible consumption model, running the private cloud like the public cloud. This is one of the reasons why there has been a rush to the public cloud at some point, because it's easy to provision. You know what you get, whether the cost is high or low is not what we're going to discuss about today, but it's more about the way it's being provisioned to you. Application developers and application leaders expect an infrastructure that is elastic in terms of growth, which is if you need more compute by next week, it shouldn't take more than you know, just provisioning it and having it there. You build, you build as you grow. You don't need large deployment projects that come every three years and you add so many more CPUs. It's about right here, right now, can I do this? So all of these are basic needs which are new but are becoming acute. We've gotten to the point where this is a pain point rather than, you know, it would be nice if we could do it like this. But why is that? Frank has mentioned earlier about this application sprawl. Where does it actually come from? We have all sorts of, we've gone from, we rely on five applications to get everything done to we interact with easily hundreds of applications, sometimes on a regular basis, on a daily basis, without even realizing it. As a little bit of background on this slide, this slide is about three years old in terms of numbers because we don't have a very good estimation of how it looks like right now, but it's about three to four times more. In large enterprises, we are talking about close to eight, nine, a thousand applications that need to be easily supported. The growth is exponential. You're not, okay, I've been in infrastructure for a long time. Maybe you've just joined, but regardless, why is this happening? This is a very, very, very boring slide that the only the only point of it is to explain kind of how applications have evolved over time. On the left side, we have, say, the 20 years ago application model. You have a database, you have an app, and you basically make calls from the application to the database to present some data. That's not a very great way to scale because that's actually a monolith. So meaning you have to hog a lot of resources for that bit and keep everything running all the time. Modern app applications are actually built like distributed systems where you call different needs based on what you need at a certain point. You call smaller bits of code and you use specific pieces of processing power for that bit that you need then and there. So the focus has shifted from 
let's make sure that we over provision for this one application to can we do all of these parallel processing different types of processing at the same time it's simultaneous it's different it's different requirements and it keeps going more in a consistent model rather than up down up down but we're not here to do application theory we're not about to start writing our own applications we're here to solve the problem of co complexity how do we build an elastic environment how do we build an environment for applications because we started saying you know we're close to a thousand applications in each environment there's going to just keep being more the demands are growing higher and higher how do you deploy an infrastructure that can support all of this easily and you have different skill sets different people different skill sets different uh, SLA requirements, inconsistencies around configurations, um, so your your security architect comes in and says, we need this to be secured a certain way, and this needs to be all the way completely siloed from the rest of the infrastructure, and you want to be able to be in control of all of this and still have all the visibility and all of the intelligence around everything you've just deployed. Meanwhile, you're getting constantly new tools installed. Oh, let's have this for visibility. Let's have this for storage management. That doesn't work at some point. The more tools you add, the more overhead you have to your problem, the, difficult, the more difficult it gets to manage everything. Let's add a little bit more complexity. Your managers just told you, we have a public cloud strategy now. We're multiplying the problem. We need more skill sets. We need somebody that understands the cloud, can tie that to the private, and somehow help us run applications both in the public and the private cloud. Oh, did somebody say edge strategy as well? You see where this is going. It's, it's just constantly growing in difficulty levels and it, may, it makes engineering difficult, but also management and cost control very difficult. Now, no surprise there, we have a solution. We've built a foundation for all of these environments that's transparent to in terms of skill set, learn once, apply everywhere, basically. The core benefit of having one platform and the ability to deploy solutions within your core infrastructure that can be deployed at scale is unlimited. Now, what Cloud Foundation does is deploying infrastructure at scale with a consistent infrastructure layer that deploys a cloud operating model for consistent operations of where data is located. And yes, I really like that word consistency, because if you remember in the previous slide, one of the things we had was different skills, different infrastructure, different application, different tools, different people. What this slide brings together, what the solution brings together is same thing everywhere. And we're going to focus a little bit on that. And basically what we want to do is solve for what's important to you, solve for that private cloud problem and just expand it to where you need it. Only us at VMware can offer this level of scale and flexibility. Cloud Foundation delivers workload independence from all of your physical layer, meaning that you have the flexibility to mix match different types of hardware, depending on how you see fit at the server level, at the network level, at the CPU level, but then constantly leverage the same software layer that you always know and you've always trusted. And you don't fall into the silo data center trap anymore because everything comes together. Your teams can work together on the same platform. Okay, so what do you get? We're talking about a solution that's data center wide. And maybe the first thought is, whoa, that's a lot. Well, that's going to be a big transition for us. Help me understand what's in the box. First of all, it delivers a full stack solution that integrates vSphere, vSAN, NSX, and what we now call ARIA, which you previously might have known as vRealize, and deploys as, first and foremost, a private cloud. What does this do? It accelerates deployment of modern applications, it has a connected infrastructure, and it provides a lifecycle management at scale. Imagine the following scenario. Right now, if you want to upgrade your entire data center or make sure that everything in your data center is up to date, you look on that right side of the slide, you see, you know, you have your management, your compute, your storage, your networking. You have to get four teams together. You have to talk to them, arrange all sorts of maintenance windows, make sure nothing goes wrong across the stack, and basically put a lot of people and a lot of brain power into how long will it take to upgrade everything. There are even features within VCF that allow you to coordinate hardware upgrades if you run it on specific hardware with your software upgrades to prevent even additional um, maintenance windows and have everything in one single pane of glass. Now, let's leave that aside. What else is there? The simplification of operations. 
because everything is under one tutelage, one single pane of glass, it's a lot easier to look into everything. So you have all sorts of routine maintenances that you can uh, that, that you can deploy. Troubleshooting across the stack becomes easier either through different work troubleshooting workflows or playbooks that you can deploy, or simply because it's one solution, you can start at the VM and end all the way at the storage, going through networking and look at what's going on rather than passing the bug forward. Last but not least, you simply have a private cloud with advanced hybrid cloud services and add-ons such as the advanced load balancing feature, which is key. And we're going to talk about this a little bit further, which is key if you have a lot of modern applications. We're going to talk about how the internet in the end runs thanks to modern load balancers. And don't think about the load balancer in the same way you did 10, 15 years ago, like, oh, it's some, just sharing some load. But I'm not going to spoil that fun. I'm going to come back to this in a second. What do you get? You get solutions you know very well. And we started with Bob. We started with vSphere. Of course, you already know vSphere inside and out. We've been around for, I, don't know, I keep saying 20 years, but every year I, see, I say 20 years. I'm guessing by now we're at 23, 24. It's more likely that already you're the cornerstone of your foundation. You're probably running on vSphere. Now, there's also VMware Tanzu. We needed this, and if you're not running it yet, here's why you should think about it. Next to virtual machines, containers are the next step in easily deploying applications. There's a whole suite of services aimed at making it easier to consume, and that's the key word there, consume infrastructure as a whole. We're empowering customers to simplify their existing operations while embracing next generation's application and services. You have applications that run on VMs, no problem. You have them running on containers, again, no problem. You benefit from the same services and features regardless of how you want to deploy it. Teams also been busy ensuring that vSphere is ready for bleeding edge computing by backing support for hardware accelerators for AI and ML workload. And we've all heard of the recent buzz in the market about anything that's open AI, chat GPT. So we're gonna see more and more demands for machine learning in, in the environment, especially in the private cloud. So you can do your own R&D at your leisure rather than publishing that data out and being able to make use of something like a public chat GPT service. All of these are becoming typical infrastructure needs. It's no longer science fiction. It's something that we deal with on a daily basis. Now, we've also enhanced regular workloads and resource management within vSphere. And we're gonna keep doing this as versions go along. When it comes to storage, vSAN is VMware's software defined storage solution. It's built from the ground up for vSphere. It abstracts and aggregates locally attached disks within the vSphere cluster. If you create a storage solution that can be provisioned and managed from within vCenter, it can easily be attached to basically any VM you want to create. vSAN is hyperconverged. What does this mean? It means that storage and compute are derived from the same shared hardware. It integrates within the entire VMware stack and provides a workload-centric data management model. And that might sound fancy, but what actually boils down to is you tap into the resources that you need. You virtualize a pool of resources and you present them to your VM accordingly. VM storage provisioning and data made management of storage SLA can all be controlled through policies that can be set and modified on the fly. vSAN delivers an enterprise scale features and performance. It's, again, it's been around for a long time. It works very well together with vSphere, because again, you have that next level of visibility into how is it provisioned for my VM. And it's a great foundation for the entire environment. Again, using that word there for fun. The network is one of the elements where Cloud Foundation enforces what we call an opinion. There is a constant interesting battle, and you know, even more so as part of this conversation, because load balancing is part usually of a networking stack. The software defined networking has been both around and a topic of heated conversation for a while. Whether you see it or not as part of your data center fabric is not a topic today. It's about how you deliver networking services all the way up to the virtual machine. Traditional networking and software defined networking that doesn't sit within the cloud foundation stack cannot offer that level of visibility and introspection into what's going on all the way to the machine level. Delivering the promise of VMware Cloud means true end to end, meaning you want to see all the way from one application to the other, how is traffic flowing? 
The problem is when you have virtualized environment passing on to a hardware environment, you usually lose some data in the process. So how would you like to approach that? You put it all together and essentially it becomes connected all the way at the application level to the other application level. So you have maximum visibility about how your traffic flows and your networking layer becomes an enabler of that. It's you flow your traffic through the hardware layer and the software layer takes care of the intelligence. It takes care of security policies and it's now intrinsic to the fabric rather than a Passover or something like sent to a gateway firewall to be checked and then sent back and having all of this traffic tromboning in your infrastructure. All of it becomes part of one system. And this adds on top of what we said before. We started by saying you have virtualization just like you had it before. Now you provision storage straight to your virtual machine. Now imagine provisioning networking for your machine straight away, straight then and as part of the same package. And you automate this flow and you make it easy for yourself to make it a repeatable flow. And you're in control of every step. You're in control of every resource. You've just virtualized how you provide network connectivity to your environment. And you've done it from the same environment that you do everything else. Let's touch the load balancer topic a little bit. Where does this all of it fit in? There's this common, fairly old concept of a load balancer being simply a tool for managing traffic for redundancy purposes. And while that, again, might have been true some 20 years ago, which seems to be my favorite time frame to refer to, it's important to remember that no modern infrastructure would be able to deploy without load balancing services. The entirety of internet traffic is supported, secured, and managed through load balancing services. Think of your favorite media environment. Think of your, how you watch your favorite TV show. That actually goes through very, very large load balancing services. This is how you present applications to the rest of the world. And in the case of enterprise environments, this is how you present applications to your users. So why shouldn't customers bring this core functionality into their data center fabric? We started by saying the data center fabrics such as Cloud Foundation are built for applications and they support them. So why not bring ALB to the team as well? This allows users to consolidate all of their services under one umbrella and take advantage of features such as application experience enhancements that come by default with ALB, intelligent traffic optimization, and ultimately a stronger security posture. Because again, this comes out of NSX. This allows you to secure everything the way you see fit from within the app, from within the machine itself. And it provides much needed visibility into traffic itself. This is again, a better together story. Bring everything under one, one umbrella, bring all of the teams together to work on this and see where time and resources are being spent. An argument can be made that once this is brought together, costs go lower, efficiency becomes higher, and you're able to make better use of what you already have through the flexibility and elasticity of a software solution. So let's quickly recap. What is VMware Cloud Foundation? VCF is a software-defined data center solution that has standardization built in. Again, deploy once, manage everywhere. We have decoupled hardware from software at every layer, whether we're talking about virtualization, where we decoupled per CPU allocations to storage, where we virtualize the way we manage storage and disks to networking, to load balancing services, to automation and orchestration. We have a software centric approach that can run on any cloud, be it private or public. Because the complete stack is unified, it means that integration works rather than becoming an afterthought. However, one of the greatest values of this is that we're not just starting out with this. You're marrying into well-known environments like vSphere, the power of vSAN, and the ability to protect of NSX and ALB. Once you solve this in the private cloud, you can easily replicate your success everywhere in the public cloud. So, Sabina, you gave us some really good discussion on VMware Cloud Foundation, what it does, how it helps us, and talk about how Advanced Load Balancer, NSX Advanced Load Balancer can really come together and help. And like you said, this better together story of bringing these uh, solutions together and making something. Uh, it's it's something I don't like to say all the time, but one plus one equals three. We're getting additional benefit from the two separate components coming together. 
So for my U.S. colleagues, I like to say peanut butter and chocolate. You know, they're good separate, but when you bring them together, they're great. And in other places, if you don't understand peanut butter and chocolate, there's multiple examples that you can give. Like, for example, I was in Thailand one time, and I had to use the example of mangoes and sticky rice. They're nice on their own, but when you bring it together, it's an awesome, it's an awesome dish. So anyways, bringing these together really helps us drive the solution and what we want to do. So we're building with confidence. And when I say building with confidence, part of the fact is that this is all coming from VMware. So you know this is validated. You know that we have done things to make sure that things work together. So you're comfortable. You should be comfortable knowing that these two pieces come together and they work together and work well. And this helps accelerate your time to value. And we'll talk about that in a little sec, a little bit. And Sabina also mentioned a little about how you can now transform where it takes minutes instead of days or weeks or months to really deploy things. And that's is that enhanced agility that we're talking about. You, we can deploy as fast as 30 minutes. And really, in some cases, less than 30 minutes, we can deploy applications and workflows and infrastructure through these solutions across the life cycle, through the whole process of working with a DevOps team and giving them the tools to be able to make it easier for them to, to deploy the things themselves as well. Troubleshoot faster because we need the analytics. We have the analytics. We're bringing things together in terms of the components of the VMware Cloud Foundation, in terms of the NSX infrastructure, the distributed firewall, the ARIA automation, what you previously knew as vRealize orchestration automation, the Tanzu, and we get that visibility so that you can troubleshoot the applications even faster. We give you end-to-end -end application experience and application latency so you know where things are happening and what to do to fix it. And of course, that stronger security posture, as Sabina also mentioned, where we have things like NSX has security built in. Distributed firewall is a very popular component of the NSX platform within the VMware Cloud Foundation. And now with NSX Advanced Load Balancer, we're adding application layer security. So we're adding web application firewall to protect against OWASP top 10 to do compliance dealing with, uh, in the US, we have HIPAA and FERPA, and we have GDPR in Europe and all these PCI DSS for financial, et cetera where we can really enhance the security posture end to end across that entire OSI stack by bringing these solutions together. So it really makes sense that we pull these components together and really get benefits top down with that OSA model and bringing these things together. And to give you an example, talking about that legacy load balancer scenario, Sabina said, you know, 20 years ago, maybe not even 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even possibly five years ago, and even today, I bet a lot of the people that are listening to this are using what I would call your traditional legacy load balancers, these appliance-based models where they deploy, they configure separately, they manage separately, maybe with some sort of centralized pseudo management, but it's not the same thing. So with VMware Cloud Foundation, NSX ALB, Advanced Load Balancer, we get the benefit that we have that build with confidence. We can integrate into the VCF in, for that private cloud, for that software-defined data center. We get that enhanced agility where we can bring things quickly and easily through these automated tools, integrating with Ingress Controller for your modern app container infrastructure, integrating with the VRO, VRA, R ARIA, for the automation, for deployment with vSphere, with other components to really provide that agility to move things quickly and easily and reliably. Troubleshoot faster that, is, that analytics is, is huge nowadays. Nowadays, it's all about analytics and understanding what is happening. And stop that blame game. That blame game is so important because, for example, when I think of blame game, and I'm a traditional network guy, and... I think of when something would come to somebody come to me and say an application is not working. They would say, okay, it's got to be the network and you need to prove to me it's not the network. Meanwhile, I'm saying it's the application guys, it's the server, it's something else over here. And it's this hot potato that we are tossing back and forth between each other trying to say it's not us or have to prove it's not us. So giving the analytics and ability to troubleshoot, we can now have more of a cohesive team to say, we understand, and this is where we're going. This is the root cause and really minimize that MTTR, that mean time to resolution 
to solve those problems that we see in these operational environments. And that's going to happen on a regular basis. And lastly, of course, that strong security posture. Not do we only provide these different security capabilities like the distributed firewall on the NSX environment, but we and the WAF web application firewall on the NSX ALB, but we start integrating things together. We have the ability to share information through these consoles, through these pieces to really start talking about how can we tie these things together because security is not just a lot of little islands. The islands need to be interconnected for a proper security posture and proper security environment. So with NSX Advanced Load Balancer and VCF VMware Cloud Foundation, it really makes sense that we can bring these together to give these benefits versus what you do with a standalone products here and there. Another example is, here is an example of the actual information in terms of documentation for manuals to deploy these environments and to manage it. And you can see here, NSX Advanced Load Balancer, working with VCF, 17 pages to deploy and operate versus this other competitor. I'm not going to say it out loud, but you can see 133 pages because there is no integration. There is no, they have to do things separately on top of, and then you still have to deal with the VCF components all separately and figure out how they work together. So eight times more documentation required to get this up and running and operationalized by using this other vendor versus what you would do with VMware. So it, again, it makes sense for me, and I'm a little biased of course, but it makes sense for me that you can use these solutions and they have some sort of integration and benefit by working together. And ultimately this means that we can simplify. Sabina mentioned this, and this is important. We want to simplify your private cloud operations, the software-defined data center. With VMware Cloud Foundation and SX Advanced Load Balancer, we can simplify at day zero for the deployment of the infrastructure because the deployment becomes a lot easier. We just saw in the previous slide how we can make the deployment easier for you to manage. And VMware Cloud Foundation takes these different components and makes it easier for you to deploy and manage. So you can get this infrastructure up and running quicker and easier. And day one for deploying the applications and getting the workloads and putting them in place, we again make it easier. Using pieces, components within vSphere and the other pieces and with the automation within Tanzu, with Kubernetes and with Aria, we can make the deployment and the scripting and management and deployment of these, operate, of these applications easier for you to do day one. So again, instead of taking weeks, days, months to be able to deploy applications because you have to go through all these hurdles and check steps, you can possibly do it in minutes. Once you define your process, you script that process and you automate it. And now you give that tool to someone who, such as the DevOps, to be able to deploy those pieces. And then operationally day two full lifecycle management. So we have the monitoring, we have the analytics, we have the ability to scale, we have the elasticity and agility that you want from the cloud. This is why people are going to cloud is for that elasticity and agility. So now we provide that to you within the operational model with that lifecycle management, with the analytics, the closed feedback loops, with the scripting and the automation to be able to do things. And when you need to, you have that troubleshooting capability. So you can reduce the time for troubleshooting, reduce, reduce that blame game again, and really get to a point where you can say, I am comfortable with knowing how my environment is deployed, how it's working, and what is its current state. And if I need to change that state, or if it needs to change itself, I am aware and I can understand I can do that quickly and easily. This is critical when we talk about modern apps and we talk about how we want to deploy in these cloud environments today, this is critical to really getting the benefit out of these environments. So ultimately, what we see here is that VMware NSX Advanced Load Balancer is really designed to make that VMware Cloud Foundation better. We provide, again, that application layer of intelligence and visibility into that VMware Cloud Foundation that is providing that consistent infrastructure across all your environments. 
again, whether a software defined data center or your private cloud, or even potentially within public clouds, or as Sabina mentioned in edge computing scenarios, the NSX advanced load balancer can sit within that or on top of that, or however you want to look at that layering or integration and really provide these benefits of the intelligent traffic distribution, optimized application experience, stronger security posture by tying all these things and everything that we talked about so far. And the other piece I would want to make sure that we take away is that the integration with VMware Cloud Foundation and the NSX Advanced Load Balancer really provides this acceleration to transition to this cloud operating model. So you're probably using cloud already today to some degree. There's probably more you want to take advantage of. There's more you want to integrate as you're talking about or moving to or looking how you want to tie together your hybrid and multi-cloud environment. It starts becoming a troublesome conversation on you have your traditional network infrastructure data center people, you have your cloud people, you have your other pieces, and you have your applications sitting in one location or another, depending on how they're deployed. Or in many cases, applications that's across both data center, private data center, and in cloud. How do you bring that all together? And that is really what VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation, and NSX Advanced Load Balance are designed to do. They're designed to integrate to accelerate that transition so that you have that consistent cloud operating model, as Sabina said, across all your environments. So we can accelerate that time to value. We can really provide that automation and provide unified workflows for your applications, no matter what the infrastructure ultimately it sits on. Public cloud, private cloud, engine computing, it is gonna be consistent. That consistency is key. And again, ultimately, operationally, we want to troubleshoot faster, stop that blame game, give you the visibility, and give you the real comfort to understand how your environment is sitting, how it's working, and bringing it all together. So again, VMware NSX Advanced Load Balancer, VMware Cloud Foundation, it makes a lot of sense for us to bring these together. So we appreciate you sitting and listening to this session. Hopefully it was very useful. And at this point, we want to go to the questions and answers. So I'm sure we have some great questions from the audience. So let's go to them now.